Hello, this is First Fire and Non-Assault Move. Welcome back to the 56th episode in the War in the East series. Let's get a situation report. The third week of August, turn 114. Let's start with Army Group North, the Leningrad sector. No change along this portion of the front. What we've done here and there is identify where the Soviets are starting to pull out some of their forces, where their defensive line is a little lighter, and we've made some attacks just to push the Soviets back here and there in attempts to straighten the line from Leningrad all the way down to Smolensk and maybe rupture their front should they not address the attacks we are making and bring in forces to bring in enough combat power of their own to stall these German attacks, these localized attacks. So we started to do that even in and around Leningrad where they have reduced their force count dramatically from what we've seen when we were really pressuring Leningrad and the Soviets overreacted. All right, so from down past Smolensk, well, let's talk about Ryzev and the developing operations that are ongoing, all related to an effort to encircle Moscow and destroy a great quantity of Soviet formations in and around Moscow. To start to the north here, we originally tried to encircle Ryzev here. We didn't have the combat power. We pulled forces out and committed them to a number of encirclements down by Voroznez area in and around Tula, Kaluga, and further south. Now we've recommitted to the effort in getting a sizable attacking force in attempts to take Kalinin, Ryzev, and in particular, the main goal is to have a mighty buildup of forces to the north of Moscow and similarly to the south in order to encircle Moscow. That has become the new German strategic goal. This is where we're at right now. It's been tough going. The Soviets were very well in position to defend the sector in and around Moscow. We broke through here a little bit. We don't have freedom of maneuver. The Soviets are inflicting their zone of control over our movements. We are only able to get this far. And again, we don't have the complete buildup of forces here to the north yet. We've plussed up the 56th Panzer Corps greatly. It now has, I believe, up to four Panzer Divisions, maybe more. It's up to five now. Yes, indeed. And we've plucked a few Panzer Divisions here and there from the Panzer Corps south of Moscow to plus up the 56th, along with bringing in another two Infantry Corps. And there's a couple more on the way that we've pulled out of the front to the south. This is the buildup here. Let's look at the forces in and around Moscow. The very front of Moscow, as we've built up an economy of force here and really shuffled as much of our combat power with our infantry corps to the north and to the south and really just defend lightly here where we have no intention of attacking. Here is what we are able to accomplish. We remember when we last left off the Soviets turn executed with our last episode, the turn the episode ended with the Soviets ending their turn at one their 114 turn, and they had built up a number of they have brought in they brought in a number of forces to try and blunt this axis of advance of ours. Looking at it now, you can see we've broken through the forces that they tried to used to block the German axis of advance, and now we are looking like this. With the furthest, <laughs> we have come in around behind the back door to Moscow. However, this 25th Panzer Grenadier Division is now only 10, 20, 30, 40 miles from Moscow. With no Soviet formations in sight, this is after aerial recon, Soviets are doing everything they can to prevent this. It is like a sword stroke. It almost looks like it's the shape of a sword. Puncturing through the Soviets' line right to the east of Ryazan. 
we are talking about potentially turning the axis of advance a little bit west and south to encircle these Soviet forces. However, we did not. We are looking at the ultimate prize, Moscow. To achieve all this, let's take a look at all the attacks that took place. This is where the Soviets had their forces blunting our axis of advance, and then we pushed them back, pushed them back, pushed them back, and we have committed every single Panzer Division, Panzer Grenadier Division, into this effort. We also brought in the 24th Panzer Corps, which we are thinking about bringing up in and around the Ryzev sector to form, to contribute to the northern effort of this potential encirclement. We decided to just move them overland, and they are now poised here. All our Panzer Divisions are very low on fuel, except the 27th. I'm not sure if I want to bring the 27th any further south or west to potentially kick this. This is a headquarters along with a Soviet, probably, corps or division to kick it back over the Moskova River and get further freedom of maneuver. However, I don't know if I want to go any further south and let this be the axis of advance and a potential link up to the north and east of Moscow rather than going any further. Rather than turning to the left, continue to go north and east a little more in a more straight axis of advance. We'll, we'll determine that. It will be Met TC decided on how the Soviets react to this. They absolutely have to start pulling back south of the Oka. Otherwise, a great quantity of their forces are going to get encircled. I don't see if they have... I don't believe the Soviets have the combat power to block the combined might of all these Panzer Corps, along with the infantry divisions that we are plying into this breakout, pushing them as far as we can in. To do so, we... Again, established economy of force, only defending only what is necessary all the way down here. And we're streaming our infantry corps to the north to this critical and maybe climactic effort to take Moscow. We may be a little hamstrung with fuel and our combat power may not be as robust as we'd like. And we still have to attack over rivers. This was critical. I definitely wanted a bridgehead over the... Klyzama River, since that may be where we're going to link up. Not so much over Moskova. This would be a smaller encirclement. Let's get the whole package here. All of these Soviet forces. And finally, take Moscow off our plate. And really, really ch change dramatically the whole paradigm of the front in this war in the east. And where the Germans would go next. We haven't done it yet. A lot can still happen. The Soviets really do have significant forces here to at least defend. I don't feel any threat whatsoever against our forces for counterattacks. Just they still have so many roadblocks that they can throw in the way of our Panzer Division, slowing them down. If we look at a potential link up, maybe around Zagorsk or Verbiliki. We don't have the same combat power at all whatsoever with the northern uh, grouping that we are attempting to, to break out with these forces here, as opposed to this southern pincer. There's just so much more combat power, so this grouping would have to do all the lifting and maybe even cross over the Muscova volga Canal to in order to establish a link-up. How far these forces would be able to get over, I doubt. Very far. The Soviets can just trickle their forces and shuffle them along, along the Lama River and block, really, the axis of advance here. This can't be a half measure. We have to do it now. I don't want to have this to be a complete mess when mud sets in, which we're, we're racing the clock. Mud could set in at any moment since we're going to be in September before we know it. And that really covers what is happening here along the Moscow front. Let's look further south. We've established a clean defensive line. No real threat from the Soviets. We've taken care of what's happening down.
by Rostov. Pretty clean now. We'll continue to push the Soviets back here and try to kick the Soviets out of here. Did we try to do that already? No, we didn't even attack yet. But we will. Talking about the forces, we're going to push further south. We have two infantry corps here. Very strong infantry corps with very nice, fresh infantry divisions that will be railed up to the Moscow effort, as well as pulling out the 38th that potentially could go north or bring it down to Rostov and get an encirclement. Here, we can't, we can't forget about the south. We still have some decent combat power here and maybe encircle these Soviets in and around between Rostov and Voroshilovgrad. That could be the next effort. Other than that, defensive line very well established. No threats from the Soviets that we really can see. We rushed in a handful of our manually controlled railroad repair engineers just to try and keep up with the front and get some railheads as close to our lead troops as possible. When you look at that, it's really all through here. We just can't catch up, especially with this. So we're bringing in our manually controlled railroad engineers to get supply as quickly as possible to our lead troops. Other than that, we're ready for next turn. And again, I'll probably cut out most of the Soviets' turn since they're not really showing much during their moves and they're not attacking very often. And it's a whole lot of bombs. Try and capture what they might do against our axis of advance to the east of Moscow. <laughs> Pretty funny, to the east of Moscow. A little local counterattack. Holding out. Very good. Alright, that concludes the Soviets' turn. Just a number of localized attacks. Nothing really to report about. Losses a little higher. Less than 20, that's good. Soviets, 13 million. Alright, closing in on that 50,000. More importantly, let's talk about weather. All right, excellent. Blessed with some clear weather. Later stages of August. And more and even more important, what did the Soviets do to blunt this axis of advance? Wow. Well, let's get an aerial recon. We got to know. This is, this is pretty major right now. <laughs> Huh. Did they pull out? No, they didn't. They didn't pull out. Well, a little bit, I think. Maybe? Oh, yeah. Oh, boy. Yeah, this is going to be hard. This is going to be rough. The north is going to be blunted. Yeah, they really committed. That's smart. Block off what they really could block off. Rather than doing it half measure still what do they have in front of Moscow hmm this is interesting what they've done let's do another one here I don't what do they have within what do they have south of here not much no shenanigans. I think we're pretty contiguous with our front. All the way down. Okay. You can understand I'm very eager to continue with this effort. Oh, man. They really brought forces in. Fort levels are not that crazy. Yeah, this is where their, their defense main line of resistance is still very well intact however over here we may have to encircle oh they're pulling out here they're definitely pulling out here may have to encircle Rizev break out here before we can do a link up oh I want to get it done sooner than later only because mud could really really screw us over 
However, it's very encouraging that I don't see a boatload of Soviets suddenly blocking our lead panzer formations. Exciting stuff. I think it's going to be more of a one-armed encirclement since it doesn't look like we're going to be able to break out very much here. We'll try, though. we got to keep the pressure on. we got to have the Soviets commit forces to the north so that they're not being freely sent to the south here. All right, I will go about moves and attacks. Very exciting, and hopefully we have some good news to report afterwards. I'll be back. All right, moves and attacks complete. What I've decided for this episode is we will watch the Soviets turn for 115. We will do moves and attacks for 116, and we'll watch the Soviets turn for 116. Because the Soviets' turns really have not... There hasn't been much happening during the Soviets' turns. Only a handful of attacks, if that. No moves to really view, and then a whole bunch of bombs. We've been cutting out the Soviets' turns, the footage for the Soviets' turns, over the past couple of weeks, which really cuts down on time and allows us more content for these episodes. That is the plan. Let's look at Army Group North. No change along Army Group North. We did make some more localized attacks just to gain ground incrementally in attempts to shorten our front. If we move down to the Northern Pincer, we have some minor success. Encircling Ryzev, we wanted to do that uh, several weeks ago. We finally have done that. However, the Soviets defended very well. We stretched our troops to the max with all these attacks. Just trying to get further progress to the north and east of Moscow with this assembly area of our attacking forces. Not much progress was made. We finally are getting that kind of a breakout now. We will remove these forces here. Probably that's going to take another week. Time is of the essence. We are on the third week of August, and mud is going to set in at any moment. Rush against time and mud. We'll destroy these Soviet forces in this now. Uh, this pocket we've achieved, this mini pocket, and we're trying to push further north and east. Really, it, it's been a slog because we're abutting against the northern portion of the Moscow front, which was so well defended, so heavily defended with fort levels and troop concentrations of the Soviets. We'll cover this real quick. We brought up those two infantry corps. We, we reassigned them to Army Group, uh, to 9th Army of Army Group Center. They are now green. They were gray. Looking here, we're pretty low now. Well, not really low. We're 155. We were, we were hovering around 450, 500 for so many weeks because we didn't have much to do. We have done a lot of core reassignments to armies to make it nice and clean looking. All right, let's look at the southern pincer movement. Oh boy, if it was hard in the north, it was even harder in the south. Mostly because the theme is too many Soviets, too many rivers, too little fuel. The Panzer Divisions, Panzer Grenadier Divisions, were hamstrung by lack of fuel, really reducing their combat power, and we didn't have the greatest freedom of maneuver in this squished portion of the axis of advance. However... We did get over, in great strength, the Klizama River. Oh, I, I regret not getting more troops over that river to get a better bridgehead. The Soviets defended very well. Look at that. That's a very well-defended hex with a Soviet Guards tank corps and a mechanized corps. Defended very well. We tried a couple hasties against them. To see if our commanders could have some inspired attacks and surprise the Soviets and dislodge them, but they didn't budge. We're, we were able to widen and deepen the bridgehead. The Soviets now will not be able to contain this. However, we are a week behind the link up. Oh, it was a long shot. I really wanted to have link up and encircle the Soviets. Because... The longer we go, there's a couple reasons, the longer we go, the more likely mud's going to hit. The longer this takes, the more likely we're going to run into mud, and more likely the Soviets are finally 
going to uproot their, from their defensive positions and start to try to get out of this pending encirclement. We want to snare as many Soviets as we possibly can. This is what it's looked like. What we did manage to do is, again, a lot of command and control reassignments, a healthy perimeter, inner and outer, no breaks, a contiguous front to interrupt any supply that is trickling up into our forward troops. We've massed up, we've grouped up, and we've managed to push a, a decent amount of infantry along with all these Panzer divisions and Panzer Grenadier divisions. Soviets defended very well here, and there's another river to cross, attacking this time from the north and east uh, to break over the Moscow, the Moskova River, in order to link up maybe here for a smaller encirclement kind of a mini op in attempts to take Moscow. We really want to go north and east of Moscow and net this whole front that the Soviets have. That would be grand indeed. But this is what it's looking like. It did not succeed this turn. I think we're on the cusp of achieving it though. We are about 110 miles from the north the southern and northern groupings to get link up. How will the Soviets react? They have to start retreating. They have to. We've defended an even more economy of force to get as much infantry as we can north into this axis of advance to include forces down here. We now have regiments. We broke down a couple of our divisions. And on a smaller scale, we can't forget about the south as all these happenings are going around Moscow. We brought up, I was trying to figure out what to do with the Panzer Corps that was still tied to Army Group South. Well, they rested for a turn or two, and now we brought, we split up the, the grouping. We now have a couple Panzer Corps here and a couple, couple Panzer Corps here just to get some low-hanging fruit to break out to the south and the north and encircle these Soviets. I kind of was following my own advice. There's really nothing left to achieve going east unless we completely rupture the entire Soviet front in and around Moscow that that will really force the Soviets to lessen the concentration here in the south and in order to the reason to go any further east is to get that decisive the, that auto win decisive axis victory which we might not manage more than likely we won't manage that as we talked about a couple episodes ago, we'd have to occupy almost every city on this map to get to 290. I think if we take Moscow, though, we get a bonus, so our victory points may jump up a little bit into the 20s, maybe 30s. That's it. We are ready for next turn. Pretty excited about what's going on. A little concerned. We're either one, going to get stuck in mud, and or two, we're going to get stuck in mud and Soviets will escape. At this point, though, my feeling is Moscow is doomed. I do not believe the Soviets can save their field army and at the same time defend Moscow and at the same time retreat out of harm's way. I don't think... They can do all those things in time in this situation. I have to qualify that. If there is mud, they can absolutely do that. If we run into a bad stretch of mud in September, two or three turns in a row, then Soviets are going to, <laughs> once again, uh, have a, a mud reprieve. Let's hope that doesn't happen. We're ready for next turn. that it's a nice representation of how close we are <laughs> to link up still too so close but so far Soviets have a lot of space to get away
I think it's going to be a half measure for both the Germans and Soviets. The Germans won't get as many Soviets as we'd like, and the Soviets won't be able to extricate as many of their forces as they would like. Look at that! How did they... Did we have a gap here? Maybe we did. I think I was enticing the Soviets to remain in place by leaving some gaps in our frontage. Decent size troop concentrations for the Soviets still in our sector. Mass up here and there to get those localized attacks. Ooh, they made one of our motorized brigades retreat. I don't think they have the movement factors available to move into that hex. Otherwise, they would have contested our supply, which is bad news. That's it. That's, that's it. Bombs, and we'll get to German losses screen. All right, German losses screen. During the Soviets' turn, we didn't see much happening. A couple localized attacks. And we'll take a look real quick here. We'll cover this first, but it doesn't look like the Soviets were pulling out of Moscow. Low losses for the Germans. Only a handful of attacks for the Soviets. Same here, all standard stuff. Most importantly, well, equally important. Whew, we lucked out. Blessed with clear weather in all three Soviet zones. With the random weather table, come September, I believe there's a decent chance, well, maybe not decent, but there's a chance we could get mud in September. Absolutely. <gasps> wow, the Soviets hanging in there, pulling out the stops, getting as much in front of the German forces as they possibly can. Oh my god, look at this. <laughs> They are heaping up their forces in front of our axis of advance. All right. Well, we can't blame them. We certainly can't blame them for doing this. With a, with Das Reich, 2nd SS Panzer Grenadier Division, 10, 20, 30 miles from Moscow. 30 miles. Interesting that they're defending lighter here. Probably really strong in here. Well, let's do an aerial recon. Let's check it out. Then, we'll, then I'll step aside, get some moves and attacks done. Let's see. Oh, yeah. How these core are so strong with... 19 without even... They must be very fresh core. Railed in. These could be all operational reserves the Soviets had in and around here, the front. Yeah, they're pulling out. I bet they're pulling troops out here. This is fine. Go ahead. There's no issue there. We, <laughs> they don't know we have two full infantry core, very strong infantry core, just to plug that. But we welcome them to remain in place. This is going to be difficult. What do we have for fuel? Oh, yeah. The fuel is... Fuel is going to be very difficult to overcome that constraint with fuel. Though through the first line, it doesn't look like there's much left. We could link up. We could link up this turn, and the Soviets don't look like they want to get out of dodge. What about up here? Let's do another aerial recon. Are they starting to exfil? No. No, they're not. Strong, though. Look at that. Three. Three, 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 three. Wow. And another three. Throwing it all in there. Everything they can possibly do. And 
big picture. All right, that is what it is looking like. A smaller op. Oh, I didn't mean to do that. Can't hurt to get more recon. Let's look further south. We had a contiguous front. I don't believe the Soviets are going to break through anywhere or, or stick there. They did. Did they attack here? No. No, they're just identifying Romanians, thinking that they're going to have a weak spot here, which they might. They might, but we'll conduct this op here and encircle some more Soviets in attempts to pull more of their forces away from the critical areas. Uh, it's just tying up so much of our own forces, this long, long extended puncture in their front, dispersing our own combat power. This is hanging in the balance. This is not a sure thing, especially if they can stack up like this. This is ridiculous <laughs> that they have so many forces left still. <laughs> All right. They're abandoning everything else. No, they're still pretty strong. All right. I'll step aside and do some moves and attacks. Let's not lament anymore about what this is looking like. Let's take some steps. I'll be back. All right, moves and attacks complete. I want to capture all the action in one episode. Therefore, our sit reps are relatively short, but that's okay because all of the action is in and around the Moscow region, focusing on the attempts to encircle Moscow and the forces defending it. Let's look at Army Group North real quick. No change at all. We held off attacks along the Leningrad front. Let's go down to Ryzev. We managed to force a couple of the Soviet formations to withdraw, and one or two surrendered. Still, they're holding out in Ryzev, but that is the minor action. All effort was to get over the Lama. We f did manage to get a bridgehead with two Panzer divisions. It's been a Herculean effort attacking these Soviets, defending the northern flank of Moscow. You look at their forces here, stack three high with great fort levels to their advantage. It has been a grind. We have inserted those two infantry corps, pushed them north. They're relatively fresh, but they didn't get into any of the action. There's just no wiggle room here. 30 miles, 30 miles between the northern arm and the southern arm of our developing envelopment. 30 miles between each lead Panzer Division and Panzer Grenadier Division. We just did not have the fuel and the combat power available to make link up the first week of September. It's unfortunate. The past two weeks, our Panzer Divisions on our southern concentration have been very low on fuel. Last week, very low in the 30s, 40 percentiles. Same thing this week, 30, 40 percentiles, and they have drained their tanks dry, 5%, 12%, 3%, 0%. Every effort was made to break through here, and the Soviets, again, are throwing everything they possibly can to stop us completing this grand encirclement. The father of encirclements, as far as the war in the East goes, to date just were not able to achieve it. What will the Soviets do to stop us? We don't know what the Soviets have to the north and what other operational reserves they have still within right on the outskirts of Moscow that they can block any further progress for link up. They definitely have plenty of forces here to pull back and get into position to try to blunt our spearhead and our spearhead is already blunted because there's just no fuel in the tank we did some airdrops and it's just a trickle not enough here here and one. we were able to airdrop four times to get fuel to our lead panzer divisions it's just a trickle and i don't know if mud will happen in the next week and if we'll have enough fuel for our panzers to make link up 
that is the glass half empty, glass half full. The Soviets have to stop this concentration of panzer divisions and this concentration of panzer divisions and strong infantry divisions from linking up. They have to have enough combat power, enough defensive, enough forces to defend. Well, we don't have a bridgehead. Once again, we're going to have to get over another river. It's been river crossing, river crossing, river crossing, river crossing just to link up. Moscow is like perfectly <laughs> defended by our river network to prevent this from happening. No change along this sector, no attacks, and we are really stretching our German forces to the utmost. We've broken down a number of our infantry divisions into regiments just to have a contiguous front in quieter sectors. Soviets even broke contact here along this little s section of this elongated axis of advance. It's really crazy right now how stretched out our German forces are. They have to link up next turn we have to link up next turn and it's the second week of september and mud could arrive further action no change here just defending in place we did kick off this smaller operation we encircled these soviets just to rupture their front again and destroy more of their field army just a small sampling of their forces further to the south and we made no attacks whatsoever all the way down to Rostov, just holding in place. We did start to rail in our Romanians. We had excess Romanians down in the Crimea, just holding off the Soviets from doing anything whatsoever in the deep German flank here. These Romanians will relieve in place some of our own, some of the German infantry divisions to further condense our combat power and apply it elsewhere along these quieter sectors and also start to garrison the cities that we have taken further east. And that is a situation report. We're ready for next turn. I am very eager, very anxious. I'm on edge. This is monumentous if we can pull this off. We look at the Soviets. They are not relinquishing any ground. They do not want to give up Moscow. You figure they're going to have to start recognizing they can't prevent this unless they start to pull troops off their own line, off their main line of resistance to block link up, then they are doomed. Let's see if they can do it. Very, very on edge about this. Next turn. Thirty miles. Just did not have the fuel. Just did not have the fuel. Getting that bridgehead over the Kleazma River. Oh, it was so hard. And the Soviets just defended so well. Just did not have the fuel to pull off an earlier encirclement. Glass half full again, we are going to encircle at least a great portion of what is in this forming pocket now, should the Soviets somehow deny link up this turn, the following turns. Mud could save them. Mud could save them. Yeah, they are doing all they can. They're going to pick on our regiments where they can find them. Yeah, look at that. They're, they started to pull back from the northern pincer blocking. Blocking, blocking, blocking. I think we can grind and carve out the link up. Here are the bombs. All right, we're going to get the German losses and hopefully cross your fingers for clear weather all right we saw the soviets made one or two attacks and as the bombs were raining down upon the germans i i got to see that the soviets are evacuating out of the forming pocket there is standing room only between the lead panzer division and panzer grenadier division from the north and the south <laughs> 
I don't, I don't know how many Soviets are there, but it looked like a lot. Let's take a look. Losses, 12,041. All very vanilla stuff here, because the Soviets didn't do much attacking at all. Most important, mud. Okay, we can we can conduct offensive operations. It's going to be very limited. Our Panzer divisions would be limited because of fuel. <laughs> what does it look like over here? Oh my my my! Yes, finally, the order was given, and look at how far they have retreated, breaking contact. Oh my my my! Yeah, we didn't manage to get a bridgehead here. It is going to be a bear. To link up it might come from the north unexpectedly so just so many soviets to just <laughs> jam into this sector what let's let's get some aerial recon did they abandon moscow maybe we could at least snip off some of these forces some are going to get away some won't it is chaos right now <laughs> in the moscow Almost Moscow pocket. Oh my goodness. Look at this. Let's get some aerial recon. Yeah, getting across is going to be maybe impossible. Just because we don't have the fuel. We just don't have the fuel. Moscow is still being held. We could still get a decent sized pocket formed. They can't hold us off indefinitely. Right now, maybe this turn they will be able to. Oh, gosh darn it, we just didn't have the fuel to link up last turn. That 30 miles, 30, 30, and they're over a river. Of course, of course, they have a river, yet another river to defend across. Thank God we are o got over the llama with these two panzer divisions. That may give us a little hope. Hope in achieving this. Alright, what are the fuel levels? Take a, look, a quick look here. 34. No, no. One deliberate each. Not gonna do it. 37. No. Just not gonna be able to do it. I don't know what's defending here. I'm sure they're masked up. They had so many forces in here. It's ridiculous. We'll start pushing to the north, crunching down on the Soviets. It'll still be a nice pocket, but the Soviets are going to be able to get out. They're going to be get out. But let's look at glass half full. We will have Moscow. Moscow will fall. That is something. I don't want to be overly greedy. We have destroyed so many Soviet forces already. I don't want to be greedy. And they snuck in here. That's all right. We have... Plenty of forces, cavalry divisions. The cavalry are great. They are great. They can do a lot of things. They are great partisan killers. Okay. Well, here it is. Here it is. The moment of truth. Can we pinch this neck of land off before all of the Soviets get away? I certainly hope not. All right. I will be back with moves and attacks. Oh, let's, before I do that, let's quickly come down here. Yeah, the Soviets aren't getting away here. We'll destroy these Soviets and start looking at future operations in the south. I don't want to dismiss what's going on down there, but this is really where it's happening. Yeah, once the dust settles, we'll shorten our lines and start once again assembling our groupings for future operations but let's see what we can do what damage can we do to the soviets here hopefully it is a crippling blow to them i'll be back i am back sooner than expected unfortunately link up is not going to happen in this episode and rather than drag on this episode any longer we've covered a whole bunch already with the attempted encirclement of the forces in and around moscow we're not going to be able to achieve link up we are just 30 miles too far last week we were just 30 miles too far we couldn't achieve link up and now the soviets recognizing doom is 
<laughs> ahead of them should they remain in place any longer they are streaming through this 30 mile gap we will at least have moscow that's a glass half full and a fair amount of soviets will be still encircled however 30 miles too far the the grandest of encirclements did not pan out thank you for watching this is first fire non-assault move out